Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to summarize what we've just learned, how to take the square root of a complex number. To show you, we're going to use the complex number 3 plus 4i, and we're going to take the square root of that. So first, we place that complex number on the real imaginary plane. We realize that the real part is 3, the imaginary part has a length equal to 4. So 3 and 4i, that's where we have our complex number. So we can write it in the general form like this, where r is the, the length of the real part and capital I is the length of the imaginary part. Then if we draw a line from the origin to that point, we then have an angle between the real axis and the line connecting that complex point to the origin. We call that angle theta. And then the length from, or the distance from the origin to that point, let's call it L, is simply the length of this line. Now we know that if we take the square root of that number, it'll be somewhere along the line that is made when we take half the angle, and the distance to the point will be the square root of the distance to that point. All right, so what that means is we first calculate the original length to the, to the complex number. So we take the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, so that's the square root of the 3 squared plus 4 squared, essentially the square root of 25 which is equal to 5. That means the length to our complex number is equal to 5. The new length then will be the square root of that. So that will be the square root of 5, which is approximately 2.236. So the distance to our square root will be 2.236. Now for the angle. How do we find the angle? Well, we need trigonometry for that, but I'll guide you through it. So if you have a calculator handy that can do trigonometry, this is how we do that. The angle is what we call the inverse tangent, you don't need to know yet what that is, of the ratio of the imaginary part to the real part. So the imaginary part is 4, the real part is 3, so we take 4 divided by 3. So you take your calculator, you go 4 divided by 3 equals, so you get 1.33333 and so forth. Then you hit your inverse button and the tangent button. So second function or inverse function tangent, so look for tangent and minus 1, hit that button, and you'll end up with 53.13 degrees. If you don't know how to do that, that's fine. Just realize that that's how we find the angle. And then, of course, the new angle will be half that much, so it'll be half of 53.13, which is 26.565. So now we know the length to the new number, the square root, the complex number, representing the square root of our original complex number, and we know the angle to that line connecting the origin to that new point, the square root of that complex number. So now what I'm doing here is I'm drawing this triangle right over here. The length is going to be the square root of 5, the angle is going to be 26.565, and now we're looking for the new i, the new imaginary part, and the new real part. To find the new imaginary part, we take the length, which is the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle, and we multiply it times the sine of the new angle, with other words, the sine of 26.565 degrees, and we multiply times the new length, which is square root of 5. So we take our calculator, we divide 53.13 divided by 2, we get 26.565, and then we hit the sine button. When we hit the sine button, we get this number. We multiply times the square root of 5, and we get 1. Now, to get the new real part of our complex number, again, we take the hypotenuse, the new hypotenuse length, which is the square root of 5, and multiply times the cosine of that new angle. So again, we take the 53.13 divided by 2, and now we hit the cosine button. So when we hit the cosine button on our calculator, we get this number. We multiply times the square root of 5, and we get 2 which means now we get the length of the imaginary part and the length of the real part of our new number. The new number, of course, is the square root of our original complex number. So that means that if we take the square root of our original complex number, which is right here, that will be equal to r nu plus the imaginary nu times i. r nu is 2, imaginary nu is 1, 1 times i is simply i, and so therefore the square root of our original complex number is 2 plus i. Now, of course, we're going to check to see if we did it correctly, so what we're going to do is we're going to square this number to see if we get this one back. So 2 plus i, quantity squared, 
Well, that is equal to the first number squared, which is 4, plus twice the product of these two, which is 2i, plus the last number squared, which is i squared. So this is equal to 4 plus 2 times 2, which is 4i, plus i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1, so that gives you minus 1. And so this is equal to 3 plus 4i. And of course, that is the original number we started with. So when we take the square root of this, we get back this. And so this was indeed the answer. And that is how that's done.